In order to build muscle, you need protein in your diet, and there's no two ways about it. But the question is whether you need protein supplements to do so. If you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in building or maintaining muscle, and may have struggled to do this in the past, or maybe aren't sure what to eat. So protein supplements like a protein powder seem like a reasonable consideration. In this video, we're going to break this topic down so that by the end of it, you can have a better understanding of whether you need to use a protein supplement to build muscle. So let's get going with this and jump straight into why you even need protein in your diet in the first place. Protein in our diet stimulates something called muscle protein synthesis and this is why protein is important for building muscle. Muscle protein synthesis is just a fancy way of saying growth or regeneration of muscle tissue by the way. Those scientists just love having fancy words. So the way you build muscle is this. We exercise and create stress on our body. Our body recognizes this, so it wants to grow bigger or stronger. It needs protein to be able to do this, so we eat protein. And that protein that we've just eaten triggers muscle protein synthesis, so we grow bigger and stronger. Simple really, isn't it? So we need protein in our diet to trigger this, but how much protein do we actually need and how does this link to supplements? Well, the recommended amount of protein intake per day is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight or about 0.36 grams per pound of body weight, which for the average person really isn't that much. For a 70 kilogram person, that's about 56 grams of protein per day. You can easily get this from normal food and no supplements necessary. However, for building muscle, we know that that kind of amount just isn't actually ideal and we want more like 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, that's more like 84 to 140 grams of protein per day. So that definitely is more protein, but it's still very possible from a normal diet. Actually, many of you watching this video will already be consuming somewhere in this 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight range. And this is where we come to whether supplements are actually necessary. If your daily protein intake is somewhere within that range that I mentioned, then to be honest, protein supplements probably aren't particularly useful for you on the whole. Having a protein shake is not going to suddenly make you grow heaps of muscle. The cold hard truth, and I know you might not wanna hear this, but if you're struggling to grow muscle, and you're already consuming a sufficient quantity of protein is that it's likely something else which is stopping you. So this might be the training that you're doing, the time frame or the consistency, your overall calorie intake, protein spacing over the day, sufficient rest. Now I hear you say, but James, what about immediately after the gym? Isn't this the best time for protein and a protein powder? So yeah, there's definitely some merit to this. There seems to be a window where our body is better at using the protein that we consume and easily digested and absorbed protein might be more useful. However, it's fair to say that whole food might be just as beneficial, perhaps even more so because of the other nutrients that it contains, but at present we don't have that much evidence on this approach. What is definitely clear is it's not just what we eat in the hour after training, or even the two hours after training. It's more like the 24 or 48 hours after training. Which is why overall, if you aren't building muscle or you're struggling with it, then it's likely something else like I've already mentioned. So as a bit of a sum up, for the average person, if you're already consuming sufficient protein in your diet, protein powders aren't necessary to build muscle. However, I think protein powders do still have some uses. So let's run through some quick scenarios where I think they might be useful for you. Now, dietary restrictions is a bit of a loose one, but it encompasses everything where, for one reason or another, it's harder to get protein in your diet. Veggie, vegan, religious reasons, that kind of thing. It is almost certainly possible that you can still get enough protein in your diet to build muscle, but dietary restrictions can make it more likely that a protein supplement could be beneficial for you. As we get older, it does seem like we need more protein to build and then to maintain our muscle. So I think it's quite reasonable to consider protein supplements to help you with this as you get older. If you are interested in that topic, then I've done a full video for it. And I've linked that at the top of the screen for you. If you aren't interested in watching that, and fair enough, 
I won't take it personally. The main thing to say is that in order to maintain or build muscle as you get older, and really at any age, is that you still have to do weight training. Probably quite self-explanatory, but you never know. It's definitely good to have food after a gym session to help fuel muscle protein synthesis. So if you know that you're not gonna have great access to food after your gym session, so perhaps you're traveling and you're short on time, then a protein powder could be a really useful addition. They are so convenient that you can make them up the night before, chuck it in your bag and leave straight away in the morning. If that means that overall your diet is going to be better, then I think that's a reasonable option. The more you train, the more important it is to nail your nutrition. If you have a high training load or compete at a high level, then proper nutrition to fuel your training and to recover properly is crucial. And again, I think protein supplements have a bigger role to play here. Overall, I would still advocate a food first approach. And if you're an athlete who has any chance of having a drugs test, then it's really important for you to consider the pros and cons properly. I've done a video to guide you on that and I've linked that at the top of the screen. Now, for a bit of balance, it's worth addressing the potential negatives of protein supplements. Are there really any? Well, in a healthy individual, protein supplements shouldn't cause any harm. There's no solid evidence to show that reasonable use as part of a healthy diet causes any problems on your bone health or your kidney health. Properly manufactured, high quality protein powders are literally just protein in a powdered form and you don't need to think of it as anything more than that. However, if you have a condition like chronic kidney disease or something which is relevant to your protein intake, then I'd advise that you have a chat with your family doctor first. As I mentioned, I would fully advocate a food first approach. So I would advise that you don't become reliant on protein powders or supplements basically quick solutions. Use them sparingly and make sure that you've got the basics covered first. High quality protein powders can be reasonably expensive, so it's worth bearing this in mind. And that kind of links to everything that we've already gone over in this video. Don't use them too often and be over-reliant on them. Eat whole foods where possible and try to explore other important factors if you aren't building as much muscle as you thought you would. Otherwise, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and press subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to press that notification icon and remember that subscribing is free. And I'll catch you next time. See ya.